what we got here uh, oh this great tom sax interview on gq i recommend you check that out too tom sax my favorite i've got his trainers somewhere down there in the other room um no point going to get them now but this is a really cool interview with tom sax on gq magazine i recommend you check it out um he talks about his practice um talks about his workout regime and again it's something you don't really hear too often from uh people from the scene really I, i'm not sure why really because you know there was it did feel like there was a time where everyone was like you know pretending they were working out and shit but nowadays it's not necessarily the same thing but tom sax kind of speaks about it quite well in this interview i'm going to try and get it up on here so i can read it to you guys let me try and make this screen a little bit more smaller ba, 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 ba. get this here so it's a great interview with tom sax here that i want to show you it's on gq it's called tom sax the handyman of high art and again, you know, I, I like how everything is exposed. He exposes the seams. Um, nothing is hidden. He uses glue guns. I think we said before he um, they put things. No, they they don't paint. They don't paint the wood. They put it. No, they staple it. They, 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 they put it. They assemble a piece of wood together. If, you if he's making like a box, you assemble it together, um, hammering nails, and then leave them open so you can see all the joints and stuff. So it's not like all flush. You know, usually, for instance, like they hide the, the joints and stuff so it doesn't look like someone made it. But he said he always wants to have like a handmade feel and stuff that he does, which is, you know, it's completely um, uh, fine. Um, interesting quotes from him here. Let's see. It starts here. Let's zoom here in the interview. This is a really good uh, video, too. You should check out with the tattoos. This guy, um, Bang Bang, is it? Yeah, Bang Bang. Really good interview, actually. He seems like a really genuine dude. But again, I'm a big fan of these kind of interviews because you get to see the studio and people working in the workspace. It's always something that's quite intense to see. Um, you're pretty ripped, Tom. What's your workout regime? The interview starts there. Tom says, Space Camp. Space Camp is a three day a week ritual. It's something that Pat McConaughey of La Palest, of La Palesta probably a workout studio developed we do five essential exercises and follow it religiously it's a deadlift a chin-up a lunge and an ab exercise and push-ups we follow the health triangle which is diet exercise and rest and sleep is key without sleep it doesn't matter how well you eat and how much you work out you need to do all three and again something that i really um you know advert ad advocate for and um those those core workouts for me i include back squats i include overhead presses i include deadlifts those kind of core workouts for me are the best things that have kind of really helped me get um uh more fitter more stronger and had the kind of great posture that i think i have now at the moment um i think the, the times i was doing like really crazy workouts i don't know there's something because you when you go to the gym you always see people doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing they don't really have the correct form and stuff like bodybuilding exercises that bodybuilding exercises that really require you to understand how to isolate muscles what to eat it requires a lot of work basically to do the work to do the workouts that these guys are doing but i think by and large the core the main ones are the deadlift push-ups and deadlifts are the ones that are really going to give you um the maximum gains and maybe even the sit-ups too or, sorry the chin-ups in, in for the most part i hate these fucking newsletter pop-ups i'm never going to sign up to it go away um how many hours is he said eight hours a day with these fucking great nasa pots the fucking again i like the i like the hand carved nature of it right they're all kind of a bit wobbly um they're not necessarily symmetrical for the most part right they're not all the same size um a lot of it what happened was a quote on here that i really like that i wanted to say that the other scientists sometimes you died in october just like a game all the collections of the boots that they've done together is that a new one now on top right oh what's that is that like a probably like a sample there, right? Is that a sample? I'm assuming that was quite cool. React 87s, obviously his Tom Sack shoes that he made, really nice. James Baldwin's Atheist for a big show, find difficult now to feel. Art studio career, some athletes are better. What does it say? There's something really cool I liked that he says here about the studio. I forgot what it was. What is it? Student planned entire world yourself here when I moved to New York. Uh, what was it? What is it? There's something I really liked here that was really nice quote. Let me see if I can find it. I should have probably copied and pasted the quote beforehand, but it was a really good quote. But how do you push people to succeed? Yeah, so this is only one. Um hiring people, yeah. But how do you push people to to be to how do you push people to to such a successful place? Create a family without people feeling like you've pushed them too hard. Where's the limit? And he said, like, and again, and this is something I've, that I've always had a lot of sympathy for, right? Being a boss, right? Being the leader, uh, being somebody that's driving a team forward, having them uh, operate at a certain kind of level that you want them to operate at because that's what you think is optimal. He said it's complicated, but it does come to three words, selection, development, and retention. You've got to choose wisely and you have to get rid of people when they don't work out quickly, but also you have to give them long enough to work out, which is a fucking hard balance to do, right? I can tell you some of the people that are the best on my team are the ones that I really wanted to fire 
So again, that 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 for me shows the kind of conundrum when it comes to being a leader, right? And something I've always kind of felt sympathy for whenever I've been in interviews, especially the interviews that you go to or companies that you go to where they're really finicky about um they're really finicky about who who they hire, right? They're like, oh, I don't want you to be under my team. I don't like this person. They they kind of make you jump through a million hoops. Uh, they ask you loads of questions. They make you do all these tests and all these fucking um, other things on top of the things that you're already doing in order for you to get a job that you don't necessarily want that bad anyway. Loads of annoying things, right? They make you jump through too many hoops. But I have sympathy for it because I found a thing to myself after reading that Google book, which is here. Where let me get it out for you guys to see. There's this great book about hiring that I recommend you check out that really kind of speaks about it a lot it's called this right work rules right um uh this right this work rules I actually I, I actually need to finish it i didn't finish it um let me yeah let me go finish it but yeah this book really changed the way of how i look at hiring because essentially it kind of made me really understand why google are so finicky about how they hire and why by and large they're doing some of the best work out there right because the only thing that you can do is really go on what somebody's telling you they've done previous in the past right maybe examples sample work but you have to really be careful about who you choose how they fit into a team because sometimes it, it only takes one person to fuck up the vibe of an entire team we've all worked in places shop floors bars offices where there's been one or two negative nancies one or two bad apples who have really kind of upset the mood of the entire place right how often have you worked in a place where somebody's got a bad um, I don't know, um, quarterly review or a bad one on one to one. They've kind of come back from the meeting, sat down in a chair, been all grumpy and moody, and it's basically affected the entire mood of the entire table. How many times has that happened before? Happens a lot, doesn't it? Or when you have a really testy uh, meeting where people are getting a little bit agitated. I don't know, maybe people are feeling the pressure of the OKRs and the KPIs and um, the pressure from up above, and it's a really tense meeting. And you come out from there, and everyone sits down, everyone's quiet, not talking to each other, and it's fucking awful for the moment go. Now imagine. Imagine hiring somebody who's like that all the time. Those situations happen because, you know, day-to-day -day work, you know, you're trying to push yourself, you're trying to be a better version of yourself before. Those things happen before. But imagine that happening day-to-day. -day. What happens after that? How do you feel? You feel fucking awful, don't you, for the most part? And I think the best thing that they can do as a team is try and hire... Um, the best thing that they can do as a team is try and make sure that they pick the right people from the beginning, right? Uh... Oh, so I got text. Okay, <laughs> okay. The, the only thing they can do, um, um, hold on. Once I got text past person, but the only thing they can do is hire first. At the, the hire the right people first. In the, in the first place, if they hire the right people, the, texting at the same time and talking is hard. How do people drive like this? Uh, um. So um, the only thing they can do is hire first, right? Hire the right people in 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 the, in the right place. And then the the problem is sometimes when you hire the right people. You're not really sure how they're going to perform. Um, even if they do start, even if they start, even if they, even if you know how good they're going to be and you really got high hopes for them, there's no guarantee they're going to smash it. You have to kind of give them the chance to kind of work out. They don't work out. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people say Gary Vee is another good example. You have to fire really, really quickly, right? If the person isn't good enough and isn't really coming up to scratch, get them out of the door straight away because you, there's, there's no time to waste. But then also there's that sweet science where you're not really sure how long it's going to take for them to get it. And sometimes, and again, I've, I've been in a situation myself even where I've started off really shit at one place and then eventually I've become one of the best performing people, right? I can imagine Dr. Martins was one of the best examples of it. I was a terrible sales assistant when I first started at Dr. Martins. Then suddenly I, 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 something switched and I became good. I rose up the ranks. All of a sudden, I was, you know, a, 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 an assistant manager within six months. Insane, right? It doesn't really happen too often, something like that, but something I've kind of seen um, in the long run with a lot of people. And again, I think something that Tom Sachs has been very um, clear with, with how he kind of runs his company and even little videos that he puts out, you know, the 10 bullets and all that sort of stuff. And something I've always been very um, much a fan of. So I recommend you check it out. It's a really good article. Tom Sachs um, talking on here at GQ. It's a really, really, really good um, thing. Uh, Where's here? But yeah, I recommend you check it out. It's a really good interview, really good article. Um, it's on GQ magazine now and I'll link it below in the show notes.